the different stages of uh, uh, development of love of God. Now, different religions try to introduce and bring up the living entities to different stages of these developments, including varying religions. But the process of Krishna consciousness is to take us through all of these stages and bring us to the highest platform. So, uh, every process of religiosity from India or outside of India are just various stages of these nine levels of development. That is why Krishna says, uh, Everyone is progressing on that path, but depending on which, who is inspiring them, who is directing them, they may different levels of progress and if one is in touch with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his pure representatives one will be able to progress up to love of God and that's why Prabhupada said that this is a one definitive process but we must be determined that in this life I will become a pure devotee this morning is Mangalarati Prabhupada is saying we should make up our firm determination. In this life I will become a pure devotee. The sad thing is that we don't make up that determination. Different anarthas come up in our heart and we pursue that, those anarthas, thinking that those anarthas will make me happy. And instead of getting rid of the anarthas, we hold on to the anartha, we want to grow with that anartha and then our spiritual progress becomes slower. And so this is the uh, wonderful process of how this whole thing works as explained by, uh, in our, by our Acharyas in the Chaitanya tradition. Any other point? Any questions, any comments, anything somebody wants to add to comment? When you come in touch with Krishna or Krishna's various manifestations in the material world, like a holy place, a holy person, a temple, the holy name, the sanctified food. Now, one may come across any of these manifestations of the Lord, even accidentally, not knowingly. I don't know if you have heard of this story. One day, husband and wife, they were quarreling. And the quarrel became quite intense. And then the husband said, the wife said, I will cook for you today. And the husband said, even if you cook, I will not eat. And on that day, the wife did not cook, and the husband did not eat. And that day was a Karashi. <laughs> and unknowingly they fasted. So when you fast on an Ekadashi day, you get a spiritual credit for that. And that spiritual credit 
that accrues unknowingly is known as Agnata Sukruti. Gnata Sukruti means knowingly you perform. So sometimes unknowingly you are led into a situation and you perform. Like say somebody is driving near our temple, Krishna Balaram temple and they lost their, you know, some direction, they took a wrong turn in their GPS and then they had to go round, round, another round and finally looking for whichever address they were, they did one, two and three circumambulation of the temple. You see, they didn't know they were going round and round Krishna Balaram. The Lord in a holy place, in a temple, and they went around, Agnata Sukruti. So, when the living entities who are roaming in this material world, material universe, somehow they come in touch with spiritual uh, Krishna's manifestations in the form of deity, temple, festivals, special vratas, and all of this, and accidentally they pick up Agnata Sukruti, and that keeps accumulating in the heart. And over a period of time, when Agnata Sukruti is accumulating in the heart of a living entity, it increases, 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 at one level, it tips off and results in good fortune. Where one comes in touch with the pure. So, this is the mystical method by which a living entity can accumulate Agnata Sukruti, and that when Agnata Sukruti reaches a certain threshold, it results in good fortune for that living entity. Good fortune means to come in touch with the pure devotee who will provide, who will explain. The process of pure devotion and service. So, um, that is the way of Agnata Sukhati, is the way to become good, attain good fortune. Yes, please. So, how do one identify one's own, uh, how can we evaluate our, yes, what are I doing, this is Anap. Oh. Now, the beauty of Krishna consciousness. The beauty of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy, the beauty of the process given by Srila Prabhupada. Now, there is further elucidation of what are all the different kinds of anattas that are present, at least the major ones. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says there are unlimited anattas, at least the broad major ones to help us identify. Chaitanya Charitamrita describes, Prabhupada translates that in English. There is a session on that, so I don't want to rush into it. There is a lot of planning and how to understand and appreciate all of these anarthas and how the anarthas come out and how to deal with it. Very interesting instructions are there by Srila Prabhupada. Let's go through them in the following session. Any other point? Any other points? Yes, ma'am. So, even the bhakti letter, even the seed falls on them, I think one should be making the ground very flowery and make nutritious, even when the seed comes, it gets the right place to grow. So that some places like seed may be by Masya Prabhupada, other seed may be going there, but if it's over going, so it's a rocky area or it's a sand, but no water is there. Okay. One should plow how should it be plowed? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says there are many seed plants in the world. Yeah. 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 And he says the devotee should become a mani, a gardener. So it is the duty of the gardener. Gardener, how if you have seen the gardener or if you have played the role of a gardener, you are constantly looking around, you are digging something and making sure there is water, there is some strength, you know, some support required to the creeper. 
you keep providing all of that. So, in the same way, a devotee has to become a mali, a gardener, and help that growth of the bhakti rasa. And more of that, we will be seeing in the next session. So Prabhu, so coming uh, in touch with the Guru is only a um, uh, way to become a fortunate and then coming in touch or there is a uh, way of uh, uh, like, uh, Guru's um, unconditional uh, see also, right? So is that the only way to come in touch with the Guru or? Uh, To, to come to Krishna consciousness, to come to love of God, you have to come in touch with a representative of God. <clears throat> you see, Krishna, the true position of Krishna, he is Adi Purusha, he is the Purushottama, he is in the spiritual world, and he is surrounded by countless devotees who are rendering loving service to him in different flavors of love. That is in the spiritual world. We are in the material world far removed from him. So Krishna has made an arrangement that if somebody has to come back to the spiritual world, they must have love of Krishna. And that love is something you cannot acquire. I will plan my way and capture that love of Krishna. No. It is something that it has to be given. So Krishna has made an arrangement. He has made a few pure devotees and he sends them to the material world and he has given them Prabhupada used a very modern world expression power of autonomy to give love of God to the living like say in our world there is some property and the owner of the property gives you the power of autonomy then you can sell it, you can fix the price, etc. Because he has given you the power of autonomy. In the same way, Krishna is the one who has to give bhakti, but he has delegated that and given that power of autonomy to his pure devotees who come to this material world and they are trying to canvas about Krishna's truth and they hold the power of autonomy to give bhakti. So we have to come in touch with a pure devotee. And there is no other way. And if we come in touch with a pure devotee and please him, it's a very personal thing. And when he is pleased, he will say, all right, let him be blessed with Krishna Bhakti and the living entity. So, uh, this is the only way, this is the way that Krishna has outlined that there will be his representatives who carry the power of autonomy, his power to give away and we have to come in touch with them and please them and we will get the blessings and by their blessing we can attain power. This is the way. Did I answer you? No, but oh, my, my question was uh, uh, because of some good fortune, we come across the Guru, right? Yes. What if somebody, like uh, the other living entities, even during Srila Prabhupada times, there were some few cats, you know, they came, they touched the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. And they also came across uh, uh, the association of Prabhupada, right? So, they don't have any good fortune, right? The animals, as you see, they are already in their karma. Uh, that's why they are in that body. So, that, that is my question. So, the unconditional love of Guru can also be considered, right? Only not the good fortune to come across a Guru. 
he is saying uh, these animals have not accumulated sufficient sukruti and uh, they have been able to come in contact with the Guru. Did the cat which came in touch with Prabhupada had that good fortune? Yeah, the cat which came in touch with Prabhupada had the great fortune <laughs> to be rubbed by a lotus feet of uh, Prabhupada is not a small thing. <clears throat> now, you see, those are very extraordinary circumstances. How that cat came and how the cat got rubbed by the lotus feet of Prabhupada and those are very unusual things. Maybe that there was some special soul that Krishna Paramatma brought that cat to touch a pure devotee and in a few days the cat died. Yeah. And so something, those are very, very extraordinary circumstances where a subhuman living entity comes in con contact with a pure devotee and goes to the spiritual world. But we are talking about the general standard route that exists for all of us as human beings come in touch with the pure, using our volition, using our free will, make choices in this world, develop vairagya, develop detachment, and this is the standard process that we are not expected to follow. Some very unusual, special blessing of your human. Yeah, because even regarding case, the same thing happened, he came across sure. Narada. There is sure. also a story of Kamanuja Charya. Ramanujacharya, he honored Prasadam and then he was just washing his plates or something. There were fishes coming and eating those Prasadam and suddenly dying and going back to a good time. So, those are some very extraordinary things. <clears throat> Is that? So, I think we have more time we can have this <laughs> case. I won't hold up everybody. So, uh, this comes to the end of the morning session. Uh, we have actually made up some time and uh, we do have some time to catch up. So what we're going to do now is we have a lunch break, but we're going to extend it uh, to uh, 2 o'clock. And I know many of your children, and I can see the children are very anxious to the up and down over there. The good thing is at 2 o'clock, there's going to be some balloon person who's going to come and keep the kids engaged and all that. So uh, give uh, everybody some time to uh, go take, get some bio break or uh, honor some prasadam and all that. And during this time, we are also going to have some kirtans going on over here. You know? uh, so we will have a little bit of kirtans. So they start kirtans in about like 15 40 minutes, everybody takes a little break. At 1 o'clock, we will start some kirtans. We will go to the and come and you know, sing for some time and enjoy some nice kirtans. Uh, as a group, we'll regroup here at 2 o'clock. Okay? Sharp 2 o'clock, and you know what happens when you're late, right? <laughs> we're very serious about it. Like, literally, you know, start a time, and as, as people see coming in after 2 o'clock, we're going to line them up. And what are you going to do? Dance. Yes. 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 And dance, and sing, and then you know, we have a time or you know, figure out how to entertain your life to